Do you ever wonder how many people have had a crush on you and never told you? What if I genuinely think that number is zero? Then you'd be correct. Join the club, we have cookies. No thanks. I block all my cookies. Turns on private browser mode. Are they nut free? I have an allergy. Depends on the kind of nut. I don't think that's what they meant. Sometimes you even have to pay extra for a second new. If the number of crushes is zero, then yes, nut free. I feel your pain. No nuts go in my mouth either. Yay, I like chocolate chip cookies. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Not exactly a hot commodity physically, and my personality doesn't make up for me winning the genetic anti lottery, so I'm fairly confident my number is zero. Maybe I'll have fun next life. Thanks for all the input. I'm really not feeling sorry for myself. My life is good, I'm just not attractive. You're all great. You go work out get a haircut and work on that confidence and you'll be swimming in your preferred genitalia. Not necessarily. Some people have good hygiene and decent confidence and still pull no bees. Those things are still worth doing, but not just to get laid because that might not work. Pull no bees? Really? I would be extremely pissed off if the number isn't zero. I am 58 and I thought this too until last year when I found out a girl I've known since we were both about 20 years old had a crush on me for years. She told me as much but said she never acted on it because every time she saw me, I was with S someone and she didn't want to get between me and the person I was with. Then I started thinking maybe I just missed some signs back then and got me wondering if I missed any other signs from other women. Listen, unless you're literally bathing in piss every night and have a personality to match, I guarantee it's not zero. I once had a co-worker who is not at all attractive. Like, when I first met him, I was physically repulsed. Then we started working tea together and I got to know him and it turns out this dude has the driest sense of humor known to man. He made me laugh so hard, and we began getting lunch together every day. As time went on and I got to know him better, I literally started looking at him differently. Over time, I grew to not just be neutral towards him, but I came to even find him attractive somehow. I'm married so it never went any further beyond changing my perception of him, but my point is that there's a lid for every pot out there. And I promise that someone in the world has beat their meat, or flicked their bean, to the thought of yak. This gave me hope. But no I don't think anyone is physically attracted to me my personality. I could see it happening. I came here to say that. Some of us know our number is zero. I'm married and still feel like that sometimes lol. Just self-hate. I'm married and I think my number is negative now. I know of one. I'm sure that's it though. Well, add plus one to that. No, but I do wonder how many serial killers have I walked past. Or have I ever been targeted by someone who last minute decided not to pick me? I know we're dark thoughts. After using the restroom at a rest stop on Route 70, I walked around a bit and sat on a retaining wall in front of my car. A guy pulled up, and without going into the building sat down near me and started a friendly chat. I'm friendly so I answered him. Immediately got a weird vibe, because he asked if I was traveling alone I was, and how far I was going, I had another 700 miles to go, where I planned to stop for the night, oh hell no pal do you think I'm a babe in the woods? To that last question, I told him I didn't know yet where I would stop. That my husband always tracked me on GPS when I drove alone, so when I got tired, I'd call him and tell him I was looking to stop, and he would price line me a room at the next available city and text me the address. In fact, he was probably getting antsy since my location hadn't changed for 20 minutes. While I was saying this, my phone rang. True to form it was hubby asking if all was well. I laughed and said I'd just been talking about him. The guy abruptly stood and quickly stepped into his car. He didn't peel out but his tires did screech a little. I got chills to the soles of my feet, got in my car and locked it, and told my husband all that had just happened. That dude never used the restroom or vending machines, he pulled in, 
got out of his car, sat next to me to talk, and took off when my husband checked in. Later I wondered if he'd been following me before stopping. I was easy to spot, I drove a Fusion Orange Saturn. I loved it because I never lost it in a parking lot. I'm certain that guy was hunting. I'm grateful my hubby is tech savvy and protective. I think you're right. Glad you're okay. Okay, I know this is a shot in the dark, but I've been listening to True Crime BS's podcast about serial killer Israel Keys. he stalked victims on roadways circa 2006 when the fusion orange Saturn was being produced, I know it's human tendency to try and draw connections from coincidences, but either way, your story gave me chills. Now I have to look up Israel Keys. This is a reason to preemptively taser all strangers who approach me in a secluded location. I'm kidding, obviously. On an unrelated note, where did I put that charger for my sparky flashlight? Holy she so what you said was really not a bluff? How scary. Right. My husband really does track me on fine friends when I'm traveling alone. I'd been on the phone with him while driving and told him I was headed to a rest stop. When my map pin didn't move for 20 minutes he checked in. His timing was perfect. I hadn't expected him to call since we'd been on the phone for a while before my stop. I just wanted to send the message to Mr. Friendly that I wasn't really alone. I was already a bit creeped out by Mr. Friendly. His asking where I planned to stop really made me queasy. Omg, um, I've had a few encounters with a man asking me if I want a lift home. One time while I was walking to the corner store by my house. Scary ashy. I once trusted mankind and there was some special needs type dude walking in front of my car in the Wawa parking lot. He asked if I could give him a ride and for some reason, I said yes. He was making weird noises as I drove and I was so scared. But luckily I'm still here, and never ever thought of doing that again. Don't know what the hell I was thinking. Ted Bundy used to fake needing a crutch and needing help to attract women. What's freaking me out right now is remembering how much more often this happened to me when I was a teenager and I looked much younger then. When I was in secondary school and middle school I often went to my grandparents after school, a ten minute walk. One day an older man probably in his seventies stopped me and offered me fifty euros to come home with him to help him with something. I politely declined and said that my grandma is waiting for me. I didn't think anything of it, told my nan about it because that made me arrive later than usual and it hit me and made me realize what was actually going on when my nan worryingly told my mum when she came to pick me up. From that day I walked a different route for like a year. I was at the DMV getting my license renewed, and the lady at the counter asked me what my real hair color was. I thought that was kind of odd. I keep my hair in crazy colors, so I answer, red, why? I just want to make sure we have your hair color down in case you get kidnapped. Your hair would grow out if you were kept in captivity and the police should know what to look for. Turns out she was a true crime buff, so we talked about that a bunch and her weird comment seemed a lot more friendly. But now I think all the time about how my license says I have red hair so the police will be able to more easily identify me if I get locked in someone's basement for a long time.